Jason had always been a night owl, so when he was offered the graveyard shift at an old call center, he figured it would be easy money. The place was in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by thick woods, and the building itself had a worn, eerie vibe. Still, the pay was good, and he needed the job. His first night started like any other, quiet. Too quiet. The clock struck midnight, and the hum of fluorescent lights buzzed above. Jason sat at his desk, scrolling through emails, waiting for the phone to ring. By 2 a.m., the stillness was getting to him. The security guard, an old man named Bob, shuffled by, offering a nod and a thermos of coffee before heading outside for a smoke. Jason returned to his computer, clicking aimlessly, when the phone rang. It was an unfamiliar number. He hesitated, then answered, customer service, this is Jason. There was silence. Then, a faint voice, barely audible, help me. Excuse me? Jason sat up straighter. I didn't catch that. Can you repeat? The line crackled. Help, trapped, basement. Jason frowned. Ma'am, are you all right? You're not calling the police. Do you need emergency services? The line went dead. Shaking off the unease, Jason leaned back in his chair, staring at the screen. Maybe it was a prank or some kind of wrong number. He went back to his work, but minutes later, the phone rang again. The same number. Customer service, this is Jason. The same static-filled voice responded. Please. I'm in the basement, can't, get out. Jason's heart began to race. Are you in the building? Do you need help? The voice crackled once more. Find me. This time, the call didn't end, it simply dissolved into static. Jason slammed the phone down and stood up, looking around the empty office. The security cameras showed nothing but empty cubicles and hallways. He decided to check with Bob. The security office was down the hall, past the old storage rooms. As Jason walked through the dimly lit corridors, the air seemed to grow colder, the lights flickering above him. When he reached Bob's desk, the chair was empty, the smell of cigarette smoke still lingering in the air. Bob? Jason called out, but there was no response. He felt the hairs on the back of his neck rise as an eerie quiet settled over the building. Suddenly, his phone buzzed in his pocket. A text, unknown number. The basement. Jason's pulse quickened. The building didn't have a basement. At least, none that he knew of. But the text was followed by another, find me before he does. Before who? Against his better judgment, Jason made his way toward the old storage room where the building's archives were kept. It was rarely used, full of dusty files and broken equipment. As he pushed open the creaky door, the smell of mildew and rot hit him like a wave. A cold draft seemed to rise from the floor, and in the corner, half hidden beneath a pile of old furniture, was a door. It was heavy, rusted, and covered in cobwebs. Jason pulled it open, revealing a narrow set of stairs descending into darkness. Bob, he called out, though he knew he wouldn't get an answer. His footsteps echoed as he descended, each step creaking ominously. The air was damp and thick with the smell of earth. When he reached the bottom, he found himself in a small, dimly lit room. It looked like it hadn't been touched in years. A single phone sat on a dusty desk in the center of the room. Jason approached, his heart pounding in his chest. The phone was ancient, one of those old rotary kinds, and it looked out of place amidst the decay. It rang. Jason froze. The old rotary dial clicked as the phone rang again. With a trembling hand, he picked it up. H hello? The same voice crackled through the line, louder this time, clearer. He's here. Run. The line went dead. And then, from the shadows behind him, Jason heard the sound of footsteps. Heavy, deliberate, getting closer. He spun around, but the stairs were gone. The basement, it seemed, had swallowed him whole. The last thing Jason saw was a figure emerging from the darkness, pale, eyes wide, 
and hollow, and reaching out toward him. The phone rang once more, but this time, Jason wasn't there to answer it. 